youth or application. Use first. This speaks to you that are parents. See what need you have of instructing your children, and training them up betimes in the nurture and admonition of the Lord till these chains of darkness be knocked off their minds, there is no possibility of getting them out of the devil's prison. He hath no such tame slave as the ignorant soul such a one goes before Satan as the silly sheep before the butcher and knows not who he is, nor whither he carries him and can you see the devil driving your children to the shambles, and not labor to rescue them out of his hands? Bloody parents you are, that can thus harden your bowels against your own flesh. Now the more to provoke you to your duty, take these considerations. First. Your relation obliged you to take care of their precious souls. It is the soul that is the child, rather than the body, and therefore in scripture put for the whole man. Abraham and Lot went forth with all the souls they had gotten in Haran, g. 12, so, all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, that is, all the persons. The body is but the sheath, and if one should leave his sword with you to be kept safely for him, would you throw away the blade, and only preserve the scabbard? And yet parents do commonly judge of their care and love to their children by their providing for the outward man, by their breeding, that teaching them how to live like men, as they say, when they are dead and gone, and to comport themselves to their civil place and rank in the world. These things, indeed, are commendable, but is not the most weighty business of all forgotten in the meantime, while no endeavor is used that they may live as Christians, and know how to carry themselves in duty to God and man as such? And can they do this without the knowledge of the holy rule they are to walk by? I am sure David knew no means effectual without this, and therefore propounds the question, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, and he resolves it in the next words, by taking heed thereto according to thy word slash p. 6 9. And how shall they compare their way and the word together, if not instructed? Our children are not born with Bibles in their heads or hearts. And who ought to be the instructor? if not the parent, yet, who will do it with such natural affection. As I have heard sometimes a mother say in other respects, who can take such pains with my child, and be so careful as myself, that am its mother? Bloody parents then they are who acquaint not their children with God or his word. What do they but put them under a necessity of perishing, if God stir not up some to show more mercy than themselves to them? Is it any wonder to hear that ship to be sunk or dashed upon the rock? which was put to sea without card or compass. No more is it, they should engulf themselves in sin and perdition, that are thrust forth into the world which is a sea of temptation without the knowledge of God or their duty to Him. In the fear of God think of it, parents. Your children have souls, and these God sets you to watch over. It will be a poor account at the last day, if you can only say, Lord, here are my children, I bred them complete gentlemen, left them rich and wealthy. The rust of that silver you left them will witness your folly and sin, that you would do so much for that which rusts, and nothing for the enriching their minds with the knowledge of God, which would have endured forever. Happy if you had left them less money and more knowledge. Second. Consider it hath ever been the saints' practice to instruct and teach their children the way of God. David we find dropping instruction into his son Solomon, Know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart, and with a willing mind. LCHXXVIII. 9 Though a king, he did not put it off to his chaplains, but wedded it on him with his own lips. Neither was his queen Bathsheba forgetful of her duty, her gracious counsel is upon record, Prince XXXI, and that she may do it with the more seriousness and solemnity, we find her stirring up her motherly bowels, to let her son see that she fetched her words deep, even from her heart, What, my son? And what, the son of my womb? And what, the son of my vows, ver. Two indeed that counsel is most like to go to the heart, which comes from thence. Parents know not what impression such melting expressions of their love mingled with their instructions, leave on their children. God bids draw forth our souls to the hungry, that is more than draw our purse, which may be done, and the heart hard and churlish. Thus we should draw forth our souls with our instrudiana what need I tell of Timothy's mother and grandmother who acquainted him with the scripture from his youth. And truly, I think, that man calls in question his own saintship, that takes no care to acquaint his child with God, and the way that leads to him. I have known some that, though profane themselves, have been very solicitous their children should have good education, 
but never knew I a saint that was regardless whether his child knew God or not. Third, it is an act of great unrighteousness not to instruct our children. We read of some that hold the truth in unrighteousness. Among others, those parents do it that lock up the knowledge of these saving truths from their children, which God hath imparted to themselves. There is a double unrighteousness in it. One they are unrighteous to their children, who may lay as much claim to their care of instructing them, as to their labor and industry in laying up a temporal estate for them. If he should do unrighteously with his child, that should not endeavor to provide for his outward maintenance, or having gathered an estate, should lock it up, and deny his child necessaries, then much more he that lives in ignorance of God, whereby he renders himself incapable of providing for his child's soul, but most of all, he that having gathered a stock of knowledge, yet hides it from his child. 2. They are unrighteous to God. 1. In that they keep that talent in their own hands which was given to be paid out to their children. When God revealed himself to Abraham, he had respect to Abraham's children, and therefore we find God promising himself this at Abraham's hands, upon which he imparts his mind to him concerning his purpose of destroying Sodom, Shall I hide from Abraham, saith God, that thing which I do? I know him that he will command his children, and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, g. Adio. 17, 19 The church began at first in a family, and was preserved by the godly care of parents in instructing their children and household in the truths of God, whereby the knowledge of God was transmitted from generation to generation, and though now the church is not confined to such straight limits, yet every private family is as a little nursery to the church. If the nursery be not carefully planted, the orchard will soon decay. Zero Could you be willing, Christians, that your children, when you are laid in the dust, should be turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine, and prove a generation that do not know God? The subjects of atheism needs not be planted, you do enough to make your children such, if you do not endeavor to plant religion in their minds. The very neglect of the gardener to sow and dress his garden, gives advantage enough to the weeds to come up. This is the difference between religion and atheism. Religion doth not grow without planting, but will die even where it is planted, without watering, atheism, irreligion, and profaneness are weeds that will grow without setting, but they will not die without plucking up. All care and means are little enough to stub them up. And therefore you that are parents, and do not teach your children, deal the more unrighteously with God, because you neglect the best season in their whole life for planting in them the knowledge of God, and plucking up the contrary weeds of atheism and irreligion. Young weeds come up with most ease. Simple ignorance in youth becomes willful ignorance, yet, impudence in age, you will not instruct them when young, and they will scorn that their ministers should, when they are old. 2. You deal unrighteously with God, that train not up your children in the knowledge of God. Because your children, if you be Christian parents, are God's children, they stand in a federal relation to him, which the children of others do not, and shall God's children be nurtured with the devil's education? Ignorance is that which he blinds the minds of the children of disobedience with all. Shall God's children have no better breeding? The children of a Jew God made account were born to him, thy sons and thy daughters whom thou hast born unto me, Ease. 1620. God had by the covenant which he made with that people, married them unto himself, and therefore as the wife bears her children to her husband, they are his children. So God calls the children of the Jews his, and complains of it as a horrible wickedness in them, that they should not bring them up as his, but offer them up to Moloch, they have slain my children, saith God, ver. 21 And are not the children of a Christian his children, as well as the Jews were? Hath God recalled or altered the first covenant, and cut off the entail, and darest thou slay not only thy children, but the Lord's also? And is not ignorance that bloody knife that doth it? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, h o 4. E do you not tremble to offer them, not to Moloch but to the devil, whom, before, you had given up to God, when you brought them to that solemn ordinance of baptism, and there desired before God and man that they might become covenant servants to the Lord? And hast thou bound them to him, and never teach them, either who their Lord and Master is, or what their duty is as his servants? Of thy own mouth God will condemn thee. Fourth. Consider, you who are parents, that by not instructing your children, 
you entitle yourselves to all the sins they shall commit to their death. We may sin by a proxy, and make another's fact our own. Thou hast, saith God by Nathan to David concerning Uriah, slain him with the sword of the children of Amnion, 2 s. 12 9. So thou mayst pierce Christ, and slay him over and over with the bloody sword of thy wicked children, if thou beest not the more careful to train them up in the fear of God. There might be something said for that heathen who, when the scholar abused him, fell upon the master and struck him indeed it is possible he might be in the most fault. When the child breaks the s bath, it is his sin, but more the father's, if he never taught him what the command of God was. And if the parent be accessory to the sin of the child, it will be hard for him to escape a partnership, yet, a precedency in the punishment zero what a sad greeting will such have of their children at the great day. Will they not then accuse you to be the murderers of their precious souls, and lay their blood at your door, cursing you to your face that taught them no better? But, grant that, by the interposition of thy timely repentance, thou securest thy soul from the judgment of that day, yet God can scourge thee here for the neglect of thy duty to them how oft do we see children become heavy crosses to such parents? It is just that they should not know their duty to thee, who didst not teach them their duty to God or if thou shouldst not live so long as to see this, yet sure thou canst not but go in sorrow to thy grave, to leave children behind thee that are on their way to hell some think that Lot's lingering so long in Sodom, was his loathness to leave his sons-in-law behind him, to perish in the flames. No doubt, good man, it was very grievous to him, and this might make him stay pleading with them, till the angel pulled him away. And certainly nothing makes holy parents more loath to be gone out of this sodomitical world, than a desire to see their children out of the reach of that fire, before they go, that God will reign upon the heads of sinners. You know not how soon the messenger may come to pluck you hence. Do your best while you are among them to win them home to God.